Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I've mentioned before that people send me these great one-sentence questions. And um, every time I mention it, I get people who try to do it. And I think what happens is if you try to do it, it won't work. But if one naturally occurs to somebody, it works. So this is a little bit longer than one sentence, but you'll understand the concept is a single one-sentence question. And this was sent to me by Viking9, Viking9, and says, with respect to auto repossession and with the inflated prices of used cars today, if a bank repossesses an auto, takes it to auction and sells it for more than what the customer owes, do they have to refund that difference to the customer? And the answer is yes. Now, that would be a very, very unusual circumstance, but might not be so unusual today. Because I've heard stories about people buying a car brand new, driving it for a year, and then selling it for more than they paid for it. And so we are living in strange times. So it's hypothetically possible, but you have to understand what happens. I'm going to walk this very, very quickly so you understand. But if you buy a car and you take out a loan against the car, and the car becomes the collateral on the loan for the money that you borrowed from the lender. Now, the lender could be the seller or the lender could be a bank, but let's, let's I'm going to refer to them as the bank. Typical transaction, you go into a dealership, got to buy that car, haven't got the money, to borrow the money from a bank, they lend me the money to buy that car, and they go on the title as a lien holder, and I make payments to the bank. If I stop making payments to the bank or otherwise default, and by the way, in most states, you can be one day late. And they, and they can repossess your car. And it'll often say that right in the contract. It'll say, we have the right to repossess your car the moment you're in default. And even if we don't immediately do it, we're not waiving our right to do so. So let's suppose that you paid a week late one time and they took the money. You paid them a week late the second time they took your money. And you're about to pay them a week late the third time and they repossessed your car when you're two days late. Doesn't matter. Contract says they can do that and you agreed to that when you borrowed the money. So the car is the collateral on the loan that you took out to buy the car. So that'd be called a purchase money security interest, by the way. Purchase money security interest. The security interest in the collateral is securing the purchase money that was lent to you by the bank. <laughs> purchase money security interest, retail installment sales contract. Two things. Okay. So if they repossess your car because you defaulted, the contract you have will tell you this, but here's how it works. They have the right to retake the collateral and dispose of the collateral in an attempt to get themselves made whole for the fact that you breached the contract. You are in default. So the law says that they must take the vehicle and they must sell it in a commercially reasonable manner. And what that generally means is they'll take it to an auction and sell it. The thinking is if you take it to an auction, people bidding against each other, it's going to get the best price than if they like were to, say, advertise it in a newspaper <laughs> or on Craigslist or something. But the point also is that how do you show that it wasn't done with some favorable thing where they gave it to their friend and sold it for less than it was worth? So they take it to an auction that's supposed to get them the best realization for their money. The problem, of course, is that most of the auctions they take them to are used car auctions attended primarily by used car dealers who tend to low bid these things. And I, I'm going to get some pushback on that, but that's true. <laughs> so you can disagree with reality all you want. I don't care. But the other thing is that the vehicle will get sold at an auction quite often where someone won't be told why it's at the auction, whether anything's wrong with it or not, and they might not even know if the car runs. But if they see it drive across the block, they know it runs, but they don't know what it's doing there. Okay, so it'll sell for some amount of money. The proceeds that they get from the auction are what we're talking about now. The first thing that happens with the proceeds is they pay the auction costs and the repo costs. So let's suppose a repo team had to come out to your house, the tow truck, and snag the car and tow it away. Tow trucks cost money. Trust me, I used to drive one. Likewise, the auction wants some money for auctioning the car off. So you got to pay the repo costs and the auction costs. And by the way, those are also included in your contract. If you read the contract you signed at the very beginning of this story, it says we have the right to retake the collateral and we get to pay the expenses of retaking the collateral 
from anything we realize from the auction of the collateral. And then it says that they have the right to take the money, the proceeds, the net, what's left over, and use that to apply towards the loan balance. So let's suppose you bought the car for $15,000 and you still owed 10. The vehicle gets repossessed, they take it to auction, they pay off the auction, they pay off the repo company, and then whatever's left gets applied to that 10. So the car sold for, say, $12,000, and 1,000 goes to the auction company, 1,000 goes to the repo company, and 10 covers it, boom, you're good to go. You're good to go. Your credit will still be trash because it's a repossession on your credit, but at least that loan got paid off. In my entire career, I've spoken to many, many people who've had vehicles repossessed, and they've told me that they thought they got ripped off. And I'd always say, well, you have the right to see the paperwork underlying all these transactions. So they take your vehicle to auction. You've got the right to know where the auction is, when the auction is, and so on. And in fact, you can sometimes even go and bid on your own car if you want to. But, but the real point here is that these things are not hidden from you. You should have the right to see them. And so I've had people bring into my office before a piece of paper that says, we took your vehicle to auction and sold it here at this time for this money. And then we had these expenses. And then here's what we had left over. We took that, applied that to the loan. And now, unfortunately, it was not enough to cover the balance of the loan. Therefore, there is now a deficiency. And that deficiency is something they can chase you for if they want to. Depends on how much money it is and whether it's worth their time. However, the opposite of deficiency in this context is a surplus. So let's suppose they sold the car magically for $20,000 and you only owed ten dollars on it. Well, after they pay off the repo costs and the auction costs and then pay off the underlying loan there would be a surplus and you'd be entitled to that. And the interesting thing is that, and I'd not be able to find this now if my life depended on it, but I know that in response to some videos I've done, I've had one or two people chime in and say, I actually had a car that was almost paid off that got sold at auction and there was a surplus, meaning that they got a check saying, here's the money that's left over after we did all the above. So it's hypothetically possible. The answer is, if the bank repossesses an auto, takes it to auction, and sells it for more than what the customer owes, do they have to refund the difference to the customer? Yes, so long as the difference also covers the cost of the auction and the repossession. So it covers those things, and there's still a surplus after paying off the loan balance, then yes, that money would go back to the borrower. So it's an extremely unusual circumstance, but it is possible. It is possible. So the other thing I'd like to point out is that there's a cost of the auction and the cost of the repossession. And I've had people before tell me, they say, Steve, I'm worried that one of these days I can't make my car payment. What should I do? And there's two other ways you can look at this. And one of them is if the car is actually worth a good amount of money and you can make this work, you might be able to sell the car yourself and take the proceeds of the sale to pay the loan off. Now, obviously, you can't sell the car with the lien on the title. You actually have to work that out, but that can be done. So if someone agrees to buy your car, and your car is financed by a particular bank, you can often go to the bank with the buyer and say, this person wants to buy this car, but there's a lien on it. If they pay the car off, the money that would go to me to sell the car goes to the bank, we remove the lien. And, and the bank should do that. And the reason I know this, I actually did that once. I actually sold a vehicle of mine that had a lien on the title. The guy goes, I want to buy the car. And it just so happened that there was a branch of my bank right there. And we did it that way. And, and so that's doable. The other thing is you can also sometimes save some of these costs or lower these costs by agreeing to turn the collateral in. And this is one of those things that's... Uh, potentially quite dangerous. But if they're going to come get your car and you know it, well, coming and getting a car costs money, which will eventually get charged to you. So if they actually were looking for your car and you knew it, and you called them up and said, hey, look, I'll bring the car to you, that might save a couple hundred bucks. It might. It might. But a lot of times people who are upside down by thousands and thousands of dollars don't care about that that much. But the point is that you might be able to lessen that a little bit. Uh, so I do not know if the prices at auction spiked the way that prices at the retail level on the lots did during COVID. I don't know if that's true or not. But 
again, I've heard of the stories. People bought a car, drove it, sold it for more than they paid for it. And so theoretically, if the car auctioned substantially more, such that it covered both the cost of the repo and the cost of the auction, yeah, there could be a surplus coming back to you. Very unusual circumstances, but it's possible. But the law actually says that, that the deficiency, they can chase you for it, but a surplus, they got to give to you. So Viking9, thanks for the question. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Questions and comments, please put them below. And a quick note to Nathan, who sent me a fax. Fax received. <laughs> I mentioned in an old video, I still have a fax number. And it's not a real fax machine, but I've got a fax number. And it's on my website. And um, I haven't had an actual fax machine probably in 15 years. But I've got a virtual fax. If you send a fax to the fax number, it kicks out and looks like a fax, but it gets emailed to me. And so Nathan sent me a note and said, hey, Steve, I heard you mention your fax. Thought I'd fire that up for you. <laughs> so thanks a lot. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. When faced with a large project, remember you move a mountain one stone at a time.